evaluate 2x when x is equal to 13. What the evaluation part of this says to do, it says I firstly identify where your variable is at. What's our variable in this case? And then the second statement is going to tell you how much x is worth in the, for this one problem. How much is x worth here? 13. Okay. So what we do is we rewrite our expression. Yeah, we're substituting. We're plugging that in. We're going to rewrite our expression, except instead of our variable, we're going to write the number that it's worth. So does the 2 change? No. No. What did the 2x mean again? Times. So we're putting that times, and then the x becomes? 13. 13. Sure. And then we work the problem out. So wherever our variable is, we're taking the, the, qu the quantity of that variable, how much it's worth, we're plugging it into that expression, and then we're going to evaluate this, which means work it all the way down until you get one number. So 2 times 13, how much is that? And that's our, that's our numerical answer. Are you with me on the whole evaluation thing so far? Uh -huh. yeah. This is pretty not so bad problem, right, because it's only one step. But we can make them a little bit more involved. So don't worry. I know you were worried about that. Don't worry. We'll get there. Is it okay to have two variables? Yes. Yeah. As long as I give you two different values, sure. So we're going to evaluate 2 times the quantity x minus y when x is 7 and y is 3. Tell me the first thing we're going to do. You change the x Great, okay. So we're going to change the x and the y. We're going to do that without doing any math in our head. We're just going to really rewrite it. That gives us a good understanding about what we do next in our problem. So we're not going to try to plug them in in our head and then do a whole bunch of math and try to get an answer. That might work for the first couple, no problem. But when I give you a, a really kind of complicated problem, it's not going to happen. So here we'll rewrite the, the two states? Yep. Yeah. Does the x change? Yes. No. What? Seven. Seven. Does the minus change? No. no. Does the y change? Yes. 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 Now we've got an order of operations problem we, we've just accomplished doing. So we'll keep our two. We know to do parentheses first, that gives us four. And then we finish off our multiplication and we get that's exactly right. Let's try a couple more. I'll give you something to do on your own, then we'll call it a day to day. Okay, tell me what to do. What first? You okay. change the x and y. What goes where? Why don't you tell me exactly what I need to write? Someone left hand side of the room over here. You guys. Someone tell me exactly what I need to write right now. Five. Great, okay. Five is the Minus five times five. Five times five, that's great. So we substitute in the thirty-five for the x. The minus five stayed the same, the five for the y. Do we still have a fraction bar? Yes. Yeah. Now what's gonna go on the bottom? Five. Now we have another order of operations problem. So when we work these out, I'm going to go through, through this quickly because I know you know how to do this. We just covered that. Uh, but what we would do is we do 35 minus 25, of course, because we have multiplication. We have 10 over 5. That's going to leave us with 2. Yes, sir.
That's 25 minus z cubed plus x when z is 2 and x is 9. Tell me what I need to write. 25 minus 2. 25. Hang on, I'm slow, I'm slow. 25 minus, great. Okay, we got that part down, that's not changing. The z becomes a what? 2. 2. Is it still raised to the third? Yes. yes. And then what? X. Plus 9. Great, plus 9. Then we work it out. How much is 2 cubed, by the way? 8. eight. eight. Which one? 8. eight. 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 Okay, why? Eight. Because two. 2. 2 times 2, 4 times 2 again will be 8. Good. You know, it's easy to do that, though. Don't get mad at yourself. Now, it's easy to just look at it and go, oh. You're back to the basics. So that's where your mind is. Your brain is just, yeah, your brain's program. Exactly, yeah. You, you see the two and the three, and you want to go, oh, that's six. Easy. Come on, Leonard. Give me something tough. There you go. No, Leonard, don't do that. Don't do that yet. Okay, and then we add first, right? Yes, sir. Oh, I got you. Well, do we add first in this one? Oh, no, you go left to right. Definitely left to right. If you add first here, you're going to get something way different than the right answer, that's for sure. So we're going to subtract first. 25 minus 8 gives me 17. Add that 9 and get... Okay, how many people feel pretty good about what we talked about today? Good. Next time, I'm going to give you, just like I did today, kind of a, well, before you pack up, it's really annoying, just so you know. Um, what we're going to do tomorrow is I'm going to give you a list of problems like I did today, so you can start on kind of a warm-up. It's going to be an evaluation problem, so we're going to refresh your memory on that tomorrow. Then we'll cover uh, some equations and translations. That'll be a great day tomorrow. Guys, did today make sense for you? Yes. Have a great day. Your homework is due tomorrow. Okay, so there's some problems on the board we're evaluating. Remember, evaluation just means plug those numbers into the variable that they correlate with and figure out a numerical answer. So let's go through that. Plug them in first before we do the math. I'll be walking around. If you need any help at all, just raise your hand, I'll help you. Okay, so let's get started up here. So really the idea is plug the numbers into their variable, see what you have, then use order of operations to figure this thing out. So in our first case, it says x is 8 and y is 7. So we're going to put, instead of y, we'll put our 7. We'll have instead of x, 8. And we do order of operations, which says we're going to do the parentheses first. We should have on your paper 7 times 5, and our answer is 35. Did you get 35? Yeah. Good, all right, fantastic. Next one, very similar idea. Why this time comes, comes second here, so we're gonna have 18 plus six. We'll have this over six. If we add those together, we'll get 24 over six, and our answer is four. Did you get four? Yes. Good deal. Okay, last one involves a little exponent, not, not, not a big deal. X squared, we're gonna do, <coughs> instead of X squared, it says five squared. Plus, instead of Z, we'll put our four and wrap that up with the minus 3 like we're supposed to have. So we do our order operations. Exponents first says 25. we get how much? 
25. Yep. Of course, we'll add first because we're going from left to right. So that means we're going to get 29. And then when we subtract the 3, after we subtract that 3, we're going to get 26. Good. How many people were three for three? Got all three of these right. Good. That's fantastic. Good job. <coughs> you know, there's one more I want to show you. Do you know there's two different types of, of measuring temperature? I'm sure you do. What are they, two, what are they called? Celsius, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Which one do we use? Fahrenheit. Which one does everyone else use? Celsius. Yeah, isn't that weird? So there's actually a formula for doing that, and it's an evaluation problem. Here's how it looks. It says if you take five times... F, which stands for Fahrenheit, subtract 32 from it, divide by 9, you'll get the Celsius equivalent for that. So let's say, let's be optimistic and say it's going to cool down here someday. <laughs> let's say it's going to get to 41 degrees outside Fahrenheit. We want to figure out how much. 41 degrees Fahrenheit is going to be in Celsius. What's the, what's the plan? What do we do? You do the parentheses first. What do we need to do before we even do parentheses? Well, put uh, 41, 41 where the F is. Right. So basically it's just an evaluation problem. Well, this time we have a temperature. So we're going to plug in 41 to F. How much is the 41 minus 32? Nine. So we'll have 5 times 9, the order of operations say we do the parentheses on our numerator first. We do our 9. Of course, we have the multiplication here. How much is the 5 45. times 9? What did you say? 45. Huh? And someone else, what is 45 over 9? How much does that give us? 5. five. Good. What's that mean? 5 degrees Celsius. So if you're thinking about this, if someone else says to you, Man, it's only 5 degrees outside, and they mean Celsius. To us, it would feel like 41 degrees Fahrenheit. They're the same value, it's just we have different ways of communicating that. Cool down to 41. <laughs> hmm? It's, it's, you said it cool down to like 41. And it's got, Being like, optimistic, Jeff. That's pretty cold. I know, for, right? For a normal day, it's like a nighttime. Yeah, it doesn't even get down, down that low at night. Yeah, it's like 66 <laughs> at night. If we're lucky. If we're lucky. Yeah. It was Not 61 last night. Oh, it was. Yeah. In between, uh, Merced, in between Merced and Chowchilla. My temperature thing said 61. Wow. Yeah, I know. I was just going to stop there and enjoy it. I live in Florida. So it's always cold. It's cold. Whatever. We're all burning down here. You guys are comfortable. Yeah. Anyway, do you understand the idea of going between Celsius or Fahrenheit and Celsius? Uh -oh. Why are you trade Celsius? That's the whole operation here, is that this formula is converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. That's what it's doing. So you plug in any temperature you want to convert. So here we said 41 degrees Fahrenheit. We do this math on it, it'll give you out a temperature in Celsius. Why? That's the way, that's the conversion for it. So the rest of the world is on Celsius. That's what it's always 532. All these numbers stay these numbers stay the same. Yep. So any temperature you want. Say you want to convert 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Plug in 100. Do the same math. It's going to come out the same. Come out. The only problem is I had to give you a number that we can't get a decimal on yet because we haven't covered that. Uh, so I gave you 41 because I knew 41 minus 30 is just 9. It's easy to divide. Uh, but you can do this with anything. If you have a calculator, it's even easier.